Hello, everybody, to another episode of the Handyman Success Podcast. My name is Jason Call, owner of Handyman Marketing Pros. I am with my co-host, Alan Lee, owner of, Han honestly, Handyman <laughs> Services in Sacramento and the Handyman Journey Coaching Group. Uh, today, we are here. Actually, firstly, our mission, the reason why we do this podcast, which I cannot skip over, guys, is to teach and inspire um, other handyman and home improvement businesses um, by by using these guest interviews um, so they can either take their business to the next level, uh, kind of, you know, find some new tips and tricks they can apply in their business. Um, overall, just here to help uh, and just kind of share the experiences of others to benefit you guys. So uh, with all that being said, today we have Mike Radcliffe. Uh, he is actually, it's a special episode in that he is uh, one of the moderators of our, the Handyman Journey Facebook group, truly doing the Lord's work there. <laughs> it is no easy task to keep that bunch in line. Uh, so Mike, thank you for all you do for the Handyman Journey. Uh, thanks for coming on. And if you don't mind, just kind of kicking us off with uh, a little about yourself, a background and how you started your handyman business. Well, uh, first, thanks for having me on. Um, Alan, thanks for trusting me uh, with the group. And I uh, hope I'm doing a decent job with that. Um, but my, uh, basically the way I started my handyman business um, wasn't really a business. It's much like a lot of the guys who come into the handyman Facebook uh, group who realize um, I've been doing this handyman stuff. This is like a business now. I, I probably need to do something about it or they want to get legit or, they actually find out that they're not making any money, you know, you know, they're, they're making money obviously, but at the end of the year, they look back and they're like, wow, I didn't really make any money. You know, I, I bought some things or whatever, but from a young age, uh, I just was always fixing stuff. My, um, for the most part, I was raised by a single mom. And so it's, you know, it's tough on single moms and, and stuff would break around the house. So I would just see what I could do um to try to fix it and at one point in time we lived next to a hardware store uh on a main street and i'd just go over there and ask those guys you know every now and then they just give me the stuff to fix whatever i was trying to fix and, but um that's the story of a lot of people who do handyman work they just started fixing stuff when they were young and they found out that they like working with their hands but as far as the business goes uh i moved to Nashville, uh, to be a rock star. Hmm. Uh, no, just to be in the music. <laughs> um, I'm a drummer and I was getting a lot of opportunities and, um, that's, you know, we, we basically, I didn't want to be 65 years old looking back saying, Hey, what if I had gone into music? You know, what would have happened? Hmm. Um, and like any musician in Nashville, you need, you need two things to survive and one's a wife who makes more money than you and, uh, and, and multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. so I just kept doing handyman stuff on the, on the side. And, um, and basically, you know, we were 15 or so years, uh, in Nashville, decided to move to a little nicer neighborhood down in Franklin here where I'm at now. And, uh, so we were basically, you know, looking at a bigger mortgage, uh, higher, higher bills. And I started, I was getting to the point where I was kind of aging out of the music business. And if anybody knows anything about music business right now, it, you know, it's not a good time to try to start <laughs> make money for, for side men. It's, it's, it's not a, not the best time, but in any case, um, we decided that I needed a more uh, predictable source of income. And, uh, so I just started doing the handyman stuff more full time and kept my old clients and started reaching out for more clients using a lot of the websites, thumbtack and, uh, home depots pro referral and that kind of thing. And, uh, just started getting busier and busier and busier and realized I could make more in a day, um, that I could work <laughs> making a, in a week as a musician, like out on the road with some he loved country artists, you know, who's hardly making any money themselves. And, um, you know, we, we thought about, you know, Hey, I'll go work at Lowe's or home Depot or something. And then I looked at what those guys were getting paid and realized I, again, I can make more in a day than what you'd make in a week, 
you know, at, at Lowe's or, you know, after taxes and all the stuff we talk about on, on the site, you know, maybe, maybe a couple days. Um, and I'm, you're working for yourself. You're, you're picking the people you, you work for, um, at Lowe's, you got to deal with a lot of crazy people getting on your case and all that. And if I get a person like that, they're, I just don't work for them anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's the short, the long version of the short journey of how I started my handyman business. That's awesome. So how many years have you been a handyman? Like, cause you did it part-time and then how, so how long have you been full-time as a handyman? Um, full-time, uh, I think we moved here in, uh, 14. So 2014. Okay. Okay. So was that eight years? Yeah. yeah. I it, I, I'm not the best at math, but okay. Cool, man. That's awesome. If it's on a tape measure, I can count it. <laughs> Very cool. So do you do anything as far as like marketing goes? Like, what do you, how do you get your name out there to get new clients? Oh, uh, you guys are going to love me. Uh, <laughs> I am, I, I do, I do very little. Um, I just got a Google page or whatever. Uh, my, I made sure that my address, my, my business name was on Google just so it's there. And so that nobody takes it. Um, but it's mostly referrals, a, a lot of referrals. Um, and next door, the website is for some people it's terrible for me it's really good Hmm. because there are a lot of bad handyman types on there and they get talked about Mm -hmm. so your your main goal on next door is to first not be one of those guys (laughs) it it spreads fast um and it's not as anonymous as a lot of other places you know your, Mm -hmm. your address is on there and all that, which is a good thing because it's a, you're accountable and you know, if somebody's going to say something about you, they have to be accountable. Hmm. Uh, but the goal, yeah, the goal next door is to um, look for opportunities to help people who have been burned by a bad handyman mm-hmm. or a bad provider. Uh, look for an opportunity to get your foot in their door um, and you can be a hero. Um, and then the, the word spreads. You get in a different neighborhoods, and next thing you know, there's seventy five thousand, hundred thousand people who can see your reviews, hmm. um, and it, it it goes goes around quick. Um, as far as the other marketing, I don't even know if this is marketing. It's lead generating, but um, on pro referral, um, I've got all positive, high, like glowing reviews on there. I think I'm five star. I think I've got out of, I think there's maybe three reviews I have that are less than five star. And one, the guy said it was an accident. Uh, um, and then uh, I was on Thumbtack for a long time and got off that because the, the pricing structure just kind of got ridiculous. And I, I didn't need it. You know, I don't need it anymore because I'm getting clients in other ways. But it's mostly... Um, mostly word of mouth, uh, referrals and, um, next door. A lot of people contact me through next door just from a search. I'm one of the first guys to show up on the top because of all the good reviews when they search handyman, another reason to have handyman in your business name. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, uh, reviews on home Depot's pro referral. I get people who will call me immediately. They don't wait to, um, for me to respond to them, which they don't have to wait long, but they'll call me and they and people literally say, I don't care if you're higher than everybody else. Um, I saw your reviews and I want you doing the work. Uh, and that's, um, I'm not a marketing expert, but when people are calling you just because you have great reviews, um, I, that's gotta be pretty good marketing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like this. It's the best thing that you can be doing. Uh, I, I've told people like you can have a choice between either the greatest marketing system ever, the slickest website, all these different things going on, and no reviews, or just a Google profile with a bunch of five star reviews. I'd take the reviews in the Google profile. Hmm. It's super powerful. Really? Okay. Yep. For and sure. I, so, 
Oh, go ahead. Gotta have a website. You gotta have a website. Um, if if I was scaling, um, like some of you guys are, if I wanted five trucks out there, then yeah, yeah, I could see that. But right now, it's me. If I if I do any marketing, any more marketing, whatever. If I do too much marketing, I guess. And and I'm again, I'm not a marketing expert. There's maybe there's a marketing expert that's going to be scoffing when he hears this. But if I did more marketing, um, I'd start to I'd, I'd get, I'd busy myself out of clients. Hmm. You know, there are, there are people who are booked out four or six months. Most of the, most of that work is for, uh, renovations, remodels, things like that. And, and people doing that stuff, they'll wait, but somebody wants their kitchen faucet replaced. They, they don't, they don't want to wait three months. Right. It's already dripping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's you a know? good point. I mean, you can definitely be too busy, you know, and, if you have no ambition to hire someone else to take care of or help with that busyness, like, yeah, you could definitely, um, I like what you said, you know, busy your clients away. Like you're just too busy. You just can't help them out, you know, and you're going to end up losing clients for that. So that's a good point. Yeah. And, and one of the, you know, kind of in bringing on Mike too, cause you by design, like you are just a handyman and you, you like it, the, how you have it set up and, and most handyman businesses, at least that I talk to, uh, they're the same way. Either they're, they by design or they have future goals to add employees and trucks. Um, so anyway, on that note, Mike, if you don't mind kind of talking about like your, um, you know, one man setup and why that's the way that you love it right now and kind of just your, your thoughts on that. Yeah. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to give some excuses and, and some, um, permission to other guys who might be watching this, um, as to, you know, why you can do this and, and, and maybe why you shouldn't. Um, and just for background, uh, I don't, we don't have kids, my wife and I, we don't have kids. So there are guys out there, um, you got kids, man, you got different priorities and you got Mm -hmm. bigger higher bills to pay. And I get that. I get that. Um, and, but I, I'll also say that give, that gives you a different motivation. You know, you, you don't realize how hard you can work until you have the right motivation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember when I built my wife in my uh, first house, uh, back in Ohio, 25, seven years ago, something like that. Hmm. Uh, I think it was 1995. Um, I, I took three weeks off of work we got it dry, went back to work. I'd go to work for eight hours, come work on my house, build my house for eight hours and then go to sleep, get up, go to work for eight hours, work on my house for eight hours, go to sleep, just repeat, repeat, you know, over Mm. and over. And I know uh, a lot of parents, that's what their life is like, (laughs) you know, so you can work hard with the right motivation. Um, Having, you know, and, and that goes along too. I know we're a little off topic here, but, if somebody's worried about quitting their job to, to go into handyman business full time, you're not going to believe how much more you can work and how much work and smarter you can work when you're working for yourself and your family, you know, and, and, and it's your business and it has to succeed and that sort of thing. And just the motivation of working for yourself um, is so great. You know, just the accomplishment you feel, when you had a great week or whatever. But so anyway, being an only guy handyman, uh, I'm afforded that luxury. Um, you know, I, I had, I have two, uh, two loves in life growing up. One was baseball. It's just my old guy league, hmm. uh, and music. And I already explained the music part. Um, and that's, uh, but you know, in the music business, if when you're self-employed or whatever, I, I'd be out late, you know, you're out late till a gig starts at 10, you know, ends at two, that kind of thing. So you can't necessarily, you're not going to be up at eight. A lot of, a lot of guys do that. They, they can do it, but you can't be at work at eight o'clock, you know, so I can do, I can start a job in the afternoon, you know, when I, when I was in the music business, if, you know, if I wanted to, um, I could get the, the rest I need, start a job, in the evening and maybe even maybe even do a job in the evening if, if somebody uh can't be home during the day to let you in or whatever um but now you know i i don't i don't want to be supervising people um i'm a weird guy who enjoys working by himself uh, without loud music going just my own thoughts hear the birds whatever 
um, I can, you know, start, stop jobs when I want. There's just, there's, you know, the, the, the stress of, of employees and making sure they're going here and there and, uh, feeling the complaints, uh, going to have to fix the messes, put out the fires, that kind of thing. You know, I do have helpers occasionally. Um, and it's normally younger guys and that's good because they, they want to learn. Um, the ones I get are hard workers. Uh, but there is that, there's that extra stress, you know, uh, of, of just, God, I hope they don't nothing up, man. You know, I hope they don't, you know, give my, give me a bad name. I hope they don't whatever, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, for me, there's, there's only the only stress is, uh, I hope I don't screw up and give myself a bad name. Um, and that's hard enough to, <laughs> it's hard enough to supervise me. Um, but you know, it, with me, don't have kids. Uh, I'm kind of, you know, I, I've got friends who grew up with their kids in sports and everything. And they, you know, they worked so they could drive all their kids around to sports. Uh, right now I'm, and guys are going to, some guys are going to hate me for saying this, and, but other guys are going to relate, you know, I'm working out so I, I can drive myself around to sports. I can, if, if I can go play baseball down in Huntsville, uh, on a Tuesday night when the, when a team needs me down there, all right, I won't schedule, you know, I'll, I'll stop working at two and I'll drive down to hmm. down there to baseball or if, or if, um, you know, my wife works from home, if she decides she wants a day off, I can take a day off and we can hang out and go to lunch and, and do whatever. Or if we just need a vacation, if we need to run down to the panhandle, you know, and take a vacation. I mean, that's, it's such a great freedom. And I, you know, I know a guy, um, he's got a similar business and he works, he'll work six, seven months, eight months. And he goes down to the keys. He's got a place down to the keys wow. <laughs> life down there. I don't know what kind of retirement he's building up, what kind of wealth he has, that sort of thing. But that's the lifestyle he's chosen. Hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys, you can't, the, the whole uh, saying, you can't take it with you. Um, you know, we, we have a retirement plan in place and, you know, but I, I don't, and again, this has a lot to do with not having kids. Um, I don't need to die with $10 million in the bank. Mm -hmm. you know? I do have a nephew. If, uh, my wife and I both died in a plane crash tomorrow, he's going to be pretty well off, uh, cause he'll get life insurance. But, you know, uh, uh, other than that, you know, I, it, it's not, I, you know, and, and some people are going to be like, Oh my God, you're, you're so carefree about it. Or you, you just, you know, I, there's no, there's not a big legacy that I have to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, I can enjoy life while I'm living it and have the freedom to do whatever I want. I mean, I've got, uh, I, I've, I've got other friends and Alan, um, you and some others on, on the group can relate to this. They're self-employed because they love doing missions work. Mm -hmm. They can leave in Africa or India um, or Haiti when the earthquakes happen in Haiti, they could just stop and leave. Or if they own their own business and, and, and they got guys that they know they can, they can run it. Um, they can just, get on a plane, they can charter a plane. Some of these guys, mm -hmm. they make, and, and one of the reasons they make all the money they make. And one of their motivations is to help people. Right. You know, they can, they can go they can charter a plane to Haiti, you know, some, some, uh, church in Uganda gets burned down. They, they write a check, hmm. you know, and it brings them great joy to do that. So, um, you know, everybody's got different motivations for, for, why you're working obviously to make a living and if you have kids that's that's it man that's your goal you get them to realize their dreams too and uh and then they're your grandkids all that stuff mm -hmm. and i totally get that um i don't totally get it because i don't know right mm -hmm. i'm not gonna pretend so um there's guys going out there oh you don't know um but <laughs> I get, I get that. And, and I get, and I know there's some of you that are, uh, some guys are probably, um, jealous, you know, that, that I'm able to do all this and everything, but don't be too jealous. Um, cause you, you know what you have. Yep. That's
Yeah, okay. I think it's all different different styles of life, and not one is better than another. Um, but the amazing thing is, and I love what you said, is that having your own business, whether that's a handyman business or whatever, it gives you so much freedom to do whatever you want. I mean, and I think that's the that's the whole crux, and that's the whole reason for starting a business is so that you can do other things, whether that is go on missions trips or, or I mean, I know I've talked to some people that like. They were in the corporate world, and they never once were able to make it to their son's baseball, you know, um, baseball game, right? But now that they've started their own handyman business, they're able to be there, like every time he's at practice or at baseball. Like, so it's the things that matter in life, the things that we really want to do, and that's that's the beauty of starting a business, you know. So that, that's fantastic. I had a pastor. He had a, a common saying, and I've I've said this on the handyman group before, but said uh no man on his deathbed ever looked up and said i wish i'd spent more time at work <laughs> no that's not it's always i didn't spend enough time with my son or daughter or my wife that kind of thing and mm-hmm. i mean that's an age-old tale cats in the cradle whatever that song is you know <laughs> <laughs> you gotta work you gotta provide you gotta you gotta do things but it, if you're your own uh boss you're if you own the business that freedom is worth so much more than than what you'd be paid uh working some corporate job even if you make more at that corporate job i mean it's right you know the, it's it's invaluable um just even just for that just if you can spend more time with people you love uh when they need you yep that's what it's all about i mean i remember um you know, one video I made recently was like, you know, the number one thing I hear of people, the reason why they don't want to quit their job to start a handyman business is because they have really good benefits at their job, you know, but it's like, well, what are those benefits really worth? Like, you know, is it worth having those benefits for being at a job that you hate or like, so you got, you got to weigh the pros and the cons and you may be making a little less money to start out, but at the end of the day, if you're getting to spend time with your family, that's worth way more than extra benefits, you know? It, it is. And, you know, the other part of that equation is um, if you're married, uh, and you, you know, uh, your wife has to be on board 100%. Yeah. And, and, or, and I hate to say this because we're, we're in the business of, you know, encouraging people to do this. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if, if she's not on board 100%, you're asking for trouble. Um, yep. And it's, I'm not saying, I'm not saying don't ever do it. I'm saying do what you can to get her on board. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever it yeah. takes, if you really want it. And because the stress uh, of a wife, you know, that it's, it's beyond, um, and I, I'm only, I'm, I'm in my uh, early fifties, so I don't want to step on uh, the tales of new generation and what they think and everything. But, you know, usually a wife is a caretaker for the children and has that motherly instinct thing. Mm-hmm. Their, their worry level is way higher. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, fathers wants the, the kid to go out and jump his bike over cars and, and play in dirty water and, you know, jump out of trees and everything, <laughs> you know, that we're, you know, we're just wired for adventure. Um, a mother is wired for protection and comfort and stability. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're going to, if you're going to jump off the cliff, uh, just be prepared to not have a happy wife. <laughs> yeah. Know? And again, um, I, I, I was blessed enough to where there was this buffer and, and, <laughs> First of all, I moved to Nashville to get in the music business. So obviously, um, my wife was, you know, <laughs> she was supportive. I mean, you don't do that, you know, and it, and it, and it won't last. And then half the guys I moved to town with, uh, more than half, they're they're all divorced around their second and third wife. Oh wow! Yeah, and that, but that's a whole nother. Uh, that's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, it's hard enough. It's hard enough. It's hard enough keeping a marriage together and keeping everybody happy. Uh, and it's hard enough starting your own business um, to do both 
it's exponential. And I'm not trying to scare anyone away. Like I said, um, she may, she, she may just be scared now of, of the concept, but when you start doing some weekend work, weekend jobs, and she starts seeing the money you're making, mm-hmm. maybe she's going to start kicking you out of your corporate job. Yeah. Yeah. I know for me, I had to, I had to kind of prove to my wife a little bit that it could be done, you know? So I think every wife is a little bit different. So. Oh yeah. Point. Um, yeah. I think we, that's enough of that. <laughs> yeah. Th- thanks for sharing Mike. Uh, so if uh, you don't mind transitioning in, Oh, sorry. What, what was that? I don't want to get anybody in trouble with their wife. I don't want <laughs> It's too late. (laughs) Uh, No, I mean, that's a super, I don't think we've ever talked about that on the podcast yet, but having the support of your spouse and your family on board is very important because, you know, it's especially initially when you're in that, I like to call it new business hustle. I mean, it takes a lot of work to get a business up to sustainability where you're making your ends meet, right? Um, It's a lot of work. There's a lot of stress involved. And when you don't have everyone on board, especially your partner, uh, it's, that's, I can't imagine that. That would be a really whole, a yeah. big weight to bear. And so I think it's a really great point that you brought up to make sure that, you know, your spouse, your partner is, is on board. That's super important for your own mental health and like confidence to move forward. Yeah. yeah the confidence part of it, that's, uh, wow. That's, that's bigger than anyone uh, can realize just having that confidence and knowing that that supports there. That's, that's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And when you have your wife behind you, you can do anything, you know what I mean? But when your wife's not behind you, it's like, it makes you feel like crap. And you know, just, yeah. So, yeah, I, I know point. for me, like, you know, whenever I, I left my corporate job that ate my soul, I, I had no money, no zero clients, just nothing. And the only person that believed well, you me had was me. my wife. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I did. Uh, my soul i like that that's a new podcast. yeah it i mean that's literally how it felt every day and it just hit a point where it's like i literally physically couldn't do it anymore but anyway the one person that was on my side was uh was my wife um and even like my parents my family and everyone's like yeah you're kind of crazy like why would you give that up it's it's a pretty good deal but you know uh, it underscores at least from my personal experience um when your spouse is on board that's that's all you need man just let her rip. Mm-hmm. Send it. <laughs> Send it. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, so if you don't mind transitioning, Mike, how, if you don't mind walking the people through how you estimate and price your jobs? Yeah, this is a big question. Just imagine this on the Handyman Journey Group. <laughs> hey, Mike, how do I price let's, this job? Let's set the record straight <laughs> from the admin or the moderate himself. <laughs> if only there was a handy book somewhere that could be purchased. Hmm. <laughs> If only, right? That'd be good to make. Uh, maybe some kind of guide. It's a handyman guide. Mike, that's a good name, handyman pricing guide. That's that's what you should name it. No. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll say it. Alan has a book called the Handyman Pricing Handbook. Hand yeah, and uh, you can buy that, and it'll it'll help you a lot. And books are super cheap, so you know it's it's a good uh, investment. But anyway, Mike, uh, how do you estimate and price jobs, man? Well, uh, I. I don't have that book i feel a little guilty uh <laughs> but um i'll send you one i'll get you one mike oh, thank God. <laughs> problem solved uh, can i answer this question <laughs> next time <laughs> uh, uh okay <laughs> so, I, I, i'm pretty much like everybody else when you first start out you're like i have no idea uh what this costs to do and and this all goes back to somebody who thinks they're making money and they're not making money. Um, one of the things I do, I take notes of every new task, um, or basically every new task I do, I put it in, in a notebook. It's on uh, on a computer. Um, I think it's Apple Notes or whatever. Like so, a job that you had not previously done before. Yeah, yeah, okay. and uh, and I'm like, I, I take notes of how long it took, and I'll also. Um, right in there, any kind of stumbling blocks, anything that'll help it go faster uh, next time. That is so cool, man. So, and I update it, you know, dishwashers, um, sinks, uh, mailbox posts, just um, a single door, a French door, exterior door, all that stuff. Uh, I'll update it because you get you get quicker at, at things, um, which means you, you, you can choose to do them for less if you want, or you can just choose to make 
more money in that time. Um, so like, and we, we advocate for the second option because you're getting yeah. paid for your experience and you should. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's a, there's a garage door guy around here. I'm recommending to him to everybody. I was hanging some shutters, um, on a house and their client had this guy doing the garage door. They came in and swapped a door and an opener in 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And they don't deserve to make, you know, uh, 75% of my hourly rate. Wow. Is that five minutes, seven, five. Okay. <laughs> uh, they deserve to make a lot of money. Yeah. You know, Cause they're, they're very quick. Um, now if they, if they can do 10 a day, they can, they can charge less and, and, and attract more people, you know? Um, but it, it's, it's their prerogative. If, if they want to charge a going rate for a door and get it done in and, in and out an hour, good for them. They should make a lot of money. Um, and, and a lot, a lot of money this year and next year and the year after that. Yep. But also, um, I, I do use a site and people are, some people are going to be just, Oh my God, not this site. Uh, home wise, it gets mentioned a lot on there. Um, there's, there's a lot of bad, uh, pricing information on the internet. And that's, that's, that's again, what everybody does when you start out, how much should it cost? to replace right. garbage disposal, right? It pops up. Well, there are a lot of sites on there that have like, I don't know when the internet was invented, but it, the first pricing guide that came out when the internet was invented, is still up there. And that yeah. Data, and that data is being recycled and regurgitated by hundreds of other websites. And um, no, it shouldn't cost $45 to replace a garbage disposal. Right, right. <laughs> You know, in 1978 or 1980, <laughs> that was. Um, it cost me a quarter. That makes so day. much sense. Like that, people that don't understand it just regurgitated it for their own like website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, re uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go on, Mike. Well, I was, and I'm. My point is that they, um, you know, Homewise is actually an estimating software or whatever. Um, I looked into it. It wasn't for me. But what I found out is that all the contractors who use it they import their numbers into it and they're, they allow by signing the terms of service agreement. Um, they allow home wise to then use those numbers as aggregate or whatever the right word is. It's their, their data that they bring in. So when they've got, you know, 400 guys or whatever saying it takes this long or it takes me this long to do a garage door opener. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, they take the high and the low and the, and the average, and that should be a pretty good number. If you've got 400 guys who all did, you know, gar um, garage door opener replacements last year and got paid that money, um, as long as they're professionals, you know, and doing it legit and not a chuck in the truck, shout out mm -hmm. to chuck in the trucks out there. Uh, as, as long as that – part of the equation is, is correct. And that should be pretty good numbers. Don't you, I mean, do you, do you agree yeah. or not? I would say too, if it's coming from businesses that are already paying for an estimating software, there's certainly a inherent level of like legitimacy there. Right. Yeah. I found, tested it out. Yeah. Um, I found for the most part that when I do a job and I go back and look at what home I said, um, it was, is fairly accurate. I mean, it's at least ballpark because there's a lot of fine print and there's a lot of yeah. jobs different, you know, and, and again, you do get faster, but I think for, um, for something new, I've never done before I'll, I'll go there and it's, it's, it's a good place to start. And it, and, and for you, um, anyone watching this podcast who's in, uh, in the uh, Facebook group who says, Oh man, I saw home wise are high end. That, that was ridiculous. It was astronomical. Um, as long as as all the other parts were equal, um, all the fine print in the in the labor um, breakdown and all that, as long as all parts are equal, it's not crazy because that mm -hmm. the, somebody's getting that number. Now, yeah, they might, you know, maybe they're in uh, San Francisco or somewhere, you know, where where stuff cost of living is super high, and if you're out in the middle of Iowa, yeah, you, you yeah. can't. But if you're out in the middle of Iowa, take a look at the low end. Mm -hmm. and, you know, or between the low and the mid. And, and if you think that's high, 
then you you need to take a good look at, at what's going on, you know, because it's not high. People are getting that money. Yeah, sometimes people have a misconception of what things cost because they think, oh, at my old job, I made 20 bucks an hour. And now this is telling me that I should charge blah, blah, blah for a garbage disposal. Like, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, so I think it, it's a whole different mindset of running your own business and setting your own pricing rather than getting paid this for a specific job, you know, working for someone. Yeah. And once you get, you know, an accounting software, or bookkeeping software that keeps track of all of your expenses um, and everything. And once you look at what you have to pay in taxes at the end of the year um, and, you know, you look back at all the costs uh, repairing your vehicle, um, the new tools, all that stuff, um, you know, it, it, it's the best time in the world to, to be a, to start a handyman business just because there's so much help out there with mm -hmm. the book software that just, it, it gives you a number every day of what you made, what, what your progress is, you know, it, your profit and loss, uh, statements, um, and after taxes and what to pay for taxes and all that. And so after you've done it a couple of years and you look back and, and you realize, uh, I'm barely breaking even, or I'm basically on my, on my own employee, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just paying myself an employee wage, but I've got all the headaches and everything else that go along with running the business. Um, you know, you need to, to look back and say, I got to start raising my rates. I have mm -hmm. to start buying more. Um, and you have to be good enough to do that though, you know? So m maybe you do have to struggle. Um, for a couple of years to build your skill set to where you can charge more and do or get more done in a day, that sort of thing. Um, but it's, it's, you know, I just, I hate seeing people um, on the group that are, are charging so little and you just know, you know, that they're going to be, they're going to come back in a couple of years and go, people, I was one of those guys charging 50 an hour. <laughs> you got to raise your rates. I, I was losing money. I was losing money. And there have been guys that post like that. And I wish, I hope more do. I hope more yeah. do. Yeah. When I first started my business, I, I just pulled a number out of thin air and that was 50 bucks an hour. Cause I'm like, well, at my old job, I was making X amount per dollar or per hour. So I'll charge 50 bucks an hour. That sounds great. Right. But then, like you said, I quickly found out I was not making any money. Like, you're just not, you know, and then from the outside, you can be thinking, well, how can you be charging 50 bucks an hour and not be making any money? Well, there's a, there's a heck of a lot of expenses that go into running your own business. I mean, yeah. And, and people definitely have to get out of that employee, um, business in comparison. They conflate employee wages, uh, with, with what a business needs to make to operate just to stay in business, let alone build a retirement, build wealth, um, mm -hmm and all that, whatever else. And I'm, I'm looking in the camera. I am not a business expert. So, <laughs> you know, anything I say here today, people need to, to, you know, not take with a grain of salt because there's experience involved, but, you know, uh, vet, vet the information, you know, mm -hmm. uh, pro prove me wrong. If you think you can run a business making 50 bucks an hour, um, show us. Yeah. Show, test the waters. <laughs> show us how to do it. Um, and, and, but anything, you know, I am not a business expert. I've learned so much in the last eight years, um, just by forcing myself to be a legit business, you know, to, to pay taxes and, and everything else that's, that's involved. Um, and, uh, but you know, I, I still, I, as much as I know, I, I'm a business expert compared to what I knew eight years ago. <laughs> right. But I, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near the level of, of some of the, some of the guys in the group and you guys. Uh, well, the, the beauty of the handyman journey group is there's people that are one, maybe just one step ahead of you or half a step ahead of you. And that's really all it takes, you know? So like there's guys that are coming in right now that they may know something that I don't know, even though I've been in the business for so long, you know, and there's things that I might know that they don't know. So it's, it's really cool because you can learn anything new from anybody. You just got to find it. So I think there's definitely value in what you're saying. I mean, this, this is eight years of experience, whereas 
if I was I if if I had just started this business, I would probably argue with you. But like, no, 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 Mike, like I was making like twenty something bucks an hour at my job and now I'm charging fifty an hour. Like I'm doing great. <laughs> like you don't know what you're talking about. But at the end of the day you do because you are eight years ahead. You know what I mean? So Yeah, and I, and I you know, I'm I'm more you know, I am in the handyman uh, mastermind group for for them some marketing ideas for uh, business ideas guys that are you know guys that are in there that that have um, you know seven eight trucks or guys that are doing a million a million or two in revenue uh, I, I want to hear from them you know and that's mm-hmm. I listen to those guys mm-hmm. uh, I don't necessarily listen to to me or to <laughs> like me you know but. The, the, the business end wise. Now I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it for great information or stuff I've learned. I'll do that. But, um, just business, I, I still don't think I'm charging enough and I need to, I need to, to, to charge more. Um, well, we'll get you that book and then you'll start charging enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you know, me, um, the knowledge of, of building, um, all that stuff that I, that I acquired through, uh, education experience, everything since I was, you know, 17, 18 years old. Um, that's the stuff I really feel like I can get to the group. Um, because there, there's not a lot, uh, I don't want to say this. I'm trying not to sound arrogant. There's not a lot. I don't know. Um, guys like Michael Krauth on there, there's not a lot. He doesn't know like construction wise and, and how to do those things. Um, you know, so, so, but, but business wise, I, I still have a thirst. I still have a lot to learn and, and, and that's the I want to learn because um, if I can make more money, um, if it's easier to make more money, um, you know, that that's, you know, the other stuff I got down, um, the, the knowledge, how, how to do, why to do, um, for some odd reason, my service, people give me glowing reviews and, um, I never thought I was that kind of guy, super friendly, uh, make people feel great when I leave a job, but apparently I am. And I thank God for that because that's not, because I'm, I'm a northerner. Uh, I've, I've been in the South 22 years now and, um, it took me almost that long to admit that, yeah, uh, northerners are rude. We're just rude, <laughs> but it's not on purpose. It's mm-hmm. just how we are. You know, two, two guys from New York, they're not rude to each other. They're just talking. <laughs> Right. Well, I'm down to Tennessee and, uh, it, it, it can be a harsh adjustment. And, hmm. um, I've never, I've, I've, one of the reasons I like working alone too, is because, um, I can, I, you know, personalities will clash and I, I don't like, I don't want to work with somebody if our personalities are clashing and it's mm-hmm. stressful all day, but you know, being, being a rude uh, northerner coming down to Tennessee and having all these great reviews and people saying how friendly I was and how all that stuff. That's, that's, um, I don't get it, but I, I think I just thought about that because that, you know, that's a, a transformation that, you know, I don't know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I can't take credit for it, but you know, it's a, apparently they like me. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for some bad reviews. I want <laughs> no because it's almost like, I, and again, I, I'm, I don't want, I don't want this to sound arrogant, but you, people do not understand how important reviews are. If you get, yeah, you start with ten great reviews, and it that just knocks down doors, um, and it and just people are looking for you with those great reviews, and um, have I maybe done some subpar work and didn't get a bad review, but it didn't get a good review. I, I guarantee it hundred percent, hundred percent. I know that has to be a fact. And have I left a job saying, I'm not sure if I want to ask for a review. <laughs> yes. And you got it. You got to admit that everybody yeah. asked, but everybody, you know, you just, you can only do, work for so many people before you get some bad reviews and you can't also on that note, you can't, you know, you, you can't uh, get too upset about that. If you got 10,000 good reviews and you don't have any bad reviews, there's something wrong with the algorithm. Um, mm-hmm. 
you know, you're, you're just going to, there's always somebody that hates everything about everything. And they just live to get on the internet and complain about people. Um, you know, I'm not going to say the word Karen, but nope, I said it. I feel <laughs> all the really wonderful people named Karen, the <laughs> lovely mothers and grandmothers named Karen out there. I know. I'm in a group at church, and there was a gal named Karen. She says, "Hi, I'm Karen. Don't hold me. Th don't hold that against me." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I honestly feel sorry for them, but, <laughs> but you know, the whole review thing. Um, and it's, and this is also something that you can, that is, you have more control over as a sole proprietor, like as a, in a only a one man band. Um, you can, you can take more time to address people. Um, you could take more time to talk to them, you know, explain things, whatever. Um, if you know, you, you know, you're not having to rush, you know, you're four weeks, five weeks booked and, and you really need to get 30 jobs in this week, that kind of thing. Um, and that, and I guarantee I, it's not even a question of, of that's one of the reasons that, um, I have such great reviews and, and mostly all, you know, five-star reviews, um, is because I, you know, I don't have to rush around and all that. And if somebody wants to say, Hey, can you take a look at all this other stuff and walk me around the house for 20 minutes and showing me if this, all this other stuff I can do, um, I can do that with a smile. Mm -hmm. I'll just, I'm sorry, ma'am. I got another appointment. I'll, I'll, I can make an appointment to come look at your work for you, whatever. So, you know, that friendly neighborhood handyman mm -hmm. comes into play um, for people. And, and, but also it, it's, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I would get a review, a uh, really good review if I did. Um, <laughs> that's supposed to be funny. <laughs> yes, I'll laugh. If you beat uh, a dead horse. <laughs> Yeah, I hate to but I would get a great review if I did. Um, well, it depends how good you. Yeah, I, I blew that line. So, just great reviews. Get great reviews, um, and then that they will will beat a path to your door if, if you got great reviews. And don't worry about a couple bad ones. Um, and I, I jokingly say this, and I'm probably going to jinx myself, but um, I, I, I. I I don't want a bad review. I just think it would help. Mm -hmm. People think you got all great reviews. People think there's something wrong with it. Uh, what yeah, happened? Statistically, your uh, Google profiles that have somewhere between like a 4.7 and 4.8, uh, they perform slightly, they're ever so slightly better than the straight fives. Really? So, <laughs> interesting. If you got a bunch of five stars, just, just get that one one star and just tilt it. Just <laughs> is, that a, is, that a, is that a thing? That's That's true. Yeah, it's it's very small, but it is statistically like proven. Like if you have somewhere, it's like a slight less than a five because it seems more real, less artificial. Hmm. Uh, anyway, I, I thought that was a really interesting fact. Yeah, That's but nonetheless, I was suspected. So to have a have a marketing guru expert uh, confirm that. That's. And hmm. I'm not sitting here saying to anybody like, go get a one star <laughs> review to get a 4.9 or what. We, I'm not saying that. We could start a business <laughs> selling one star reviews. I don't think there's anything like that out there. Ah, there is for your competitors, but anyway. You know how you ask your friends and family to leave your reviews when you first start out? Just call a couple of them and say, go, go tell them I did lousy. I, I be, you saw me beating a dead horse and just leave me a one star. Hey, Grandma, can you uh, leave me a one star review? <laughs> Oh gosh, um, that's funny, man. That's awesome. So uh, uh, over <laughs> over these last eight years, what would you say have been like some of your biggest wins and some of your biggest losses as well? Uh, I, I, I think my biggest win. Uh, this it's going back to the reviews. Um, when I when I walk out of a client's house and they're thrilled to death. You know, or they, they say, um, I had one lady, I, I get, I get emotional. I had one lady say, um, you know, you, you took all the stress of this entire project away from me. Thank you so much. You know? Wow. That's awesome. And another one said, you know, we, we had all these handyman cars on our fridge and after you did a job, we took them all threw them in the trash. <laughs> um, wow. Just solving sol solving that dilemma for somebody. Mm -hmm. People are looking. They're 
looking so far for someone they can trust who's going to do the work, um, do it, do it well, properly, um, come back if there's a problem. Um, you know, being that guy for people that, 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 that gives me a high, you know, mm-hmm. I, love, I love that. And just knowing, you know, um, you know, part of that probably comes back, uh, from, you know, my mom knowing that, you know, did, seeing her maybe get ripped off from mm-hmm. contact, whatever that kind of thing. So if I can be that hero, mm-hmm. somebody, um, that's awesome. Or just, you know, not necessarily the hero, but just, you know, there's only one fridge or there's only one magnet on the fridge. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're that guy and they don't have to worry. They don't have to call around. They don't have to do any of that. It's just like, just call Mike. And I'm sure that name's already taken. Just call Mike. <laughs> I'm almost positive it is because I look for it on Gmail. But, uh, you know, it, that's, um, that's really what I, what I love. Um, you know, to serve people, do something that they just think is impossible or they have no idea how to do it. They, it's just like, you know, sending a rocket ship to Mars as far as they're concerned. But f- hmm. for us, it's easy. It's, you know, stuff, some of the stuff we do, it's like, we think it's easy, but it's not, if you've never done it. You know, I look back to when I first screwed things up when I was really younger, even building my own house, how easy it is to mess something up. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a million ways to do something in one right way, um, (laughs) hyperbole, but you know, um, but you know, I'm, uh, I'm digressing. So basically, you know, being able to serve people and take care of a stress that they have in their life, remove that stress, walk out of their house, uh, knowing they never have to worry about that again. Think about that again. And also knowing that, that, you know, they've got somebody reliable now that trustworthy that they can call and, and don't have to search anymore for any of that stuff. Uh, now loss. Yeah. I mean, lo- loss wise, um, you always, you, you know, you, you look back at some sour moments, um, some people that, that, uh, maybe, maybe wanted to leave a bad review. I don't know. Um, but just, I, sometimes it's just, you feel it, fe- feeling like you walked off a job, um, knowing you didn't do your best. Maybe you cut a corner. Um, those, those are things you, you, you remember. You don't, you know, and I hope somebody getting in this business can go their whole career without one of those, hmm. one of those moments walking off a job going, I don't think I did my best or they're saying walking off knowing that you did good enough. Um, and it should have been better. And, and that'll happen. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you got to get past it. You got to forgive yourself. Um, you got to hope it didn't leak. <laughs> yeah, you know, mm-hmm. dude, you're going back. I, I'll tell you this. Um, that if you call it karma or stupid tax, or, um, if you're believing the Bible, it's reaping what you sow. Um, but a, a lot of times you, you leave that job knowing that you could have done better or should have done better. Uh, you're going to be making a trip back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep. Just, you know, go outside, have a cold drink, take five minutes off, say a prayer, whatever you do, and get back in there and, mm-hmm. you know, right, do it better. Definitely. Sometimes that means cutting out what you did to do it right, you know, because, mm. yeah. <laughs> have you had those jobs, Alan? I have. I have. And it sucks because it's like when you get it done, you're like, oh. Like, I don't know what, whether it's, you know, hooking up a new sink with a vanity and you, you put the P-trap a little bit too far out and it's like, oh, it needs to be in just, just slightly, you know, and the, so you can't get the drain quite correct and it, it just sucks. Like, you know, like, this is what it needs to take to fix it. And that means removing what I just did. You know, it sucks. It, it's an ego hit, but you got to do it right, you know. Well, and I, I uh, there's something I've said on the group before. It's like you, you have to – you have to de- determine you ask yourself the question, what's the, um, what's the cost of my integrity? What's the price of my integrity? That's good. 
my integrity, uh, three hours extra work is, is the price of my integrity using sub standard parts. I, I don't know, but when it comes to something like that, you're like, is my integrity for sale for the 75 bucks I'm going to lose by making this right? You know, that, that kind of thing. Um, and I, I'll just say, I hope it's not. And yeah, that's huge, man. And if you listeners are note takers, man, write that down. What's the price of my integrity? I wrote that down. That's, that's, well, that's, that's not mine. Um, uh, I heard that from somebody and uh, it's, it, you know, it struck a chord. That's amazing. Something so, you have every day, you know, walking out, walking out the house. Um, especially if you're starting off new and you're frustrated and you know that this job you're walking into is going to take you longer than it should because you're, new at it. well, you're just, you're paying tuition. You know, there's guys on the group that say that a lot. And I, I like that. You know, if a job takes, you twice as long as it takes me, you're just paying tuition. Hmm, that's good. You know, and, and, but if you're going to take shortcuts because you don't want it to take that long, then, then you're talking about the price of your integrity and you need to hmm. look at yourself in the mirror and, and ask yourself that question. Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, it's, I, I, it's good practice too, especially like if your goal is to, you know, add trucks and add employees and all that stuff. Cause you're going to make choices that are going to cost you money in the future. So you may as well, you know, eat the ones that you can have a more direct influence over now and kind of work that muscle of like, you know, my integrity is worth a heck of a lot more than that. So let me do this right. Uh, yeah, first, if you're if you're going to cut corners now, you know, you and your employees when you grow are going to cut corners then. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be bigger corners. And that could have lasting implications that could, at the end of the day, even land you in jail. I mean, we're, we're building, we're putting stuff in people's homes. You know what I mean? It could land you in bankruptcy. You burn someone's house down, you're, whew, you're screwed. <laughs> you know, the other thing is that it gets, it gets easier to do after the first time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and it's, you know, the, the first time you cut a corner or whatever, maybe you feel super guilty about it. You feel super guilty. And then. The next time you don't feel quite as guilty and a year from now, it's just part of your standing operating procedure. Yep. And like you said, you scale up, you're going to, you're going to be teaching that to your employees. Um, and you, you know, and you won't get good employees if that's your mode of operation. If they, if you're cutting corners and doing shoddy work and uh, trying to charge as much as you can for as little as you you know, or, or for, for shoddy work. Uh, I'm all for charging as much as you can for as little work as possible. That's, mm -hmm. that's determining your, your market value. But you know, if you're, if you're just trying to make as much money off people and do shoddy work and cut corners, you're not going to get good employees. You, you'll get employees like you mm -hmm. who don't mind doing that. They want to learn how to do that. And that's, that's fine. But, um, I, I hope you don't join the handyman mastermind group. <laughs> Cause you will get moderated. <laughs> so in, in closing here, so what would be some parting advice that you would have for the new guy looking to get started into this business? Uh, I mean, besides everything we've already talked about, this whole podcast has been like advice. So what um, else you got? <laughs> that's really the question. What else you got, Mike? <laughs> We got a couple minutes here. <laughs> uh, uh, learn everything. Learn not just how to do stuff, but why it's done that way. Uh, and this is something I've said on the group before, but a, there are a lot of workers out there, a lot of construction workers. In my area, it's booming. It's booming. So you know they're not getting the best, most knowledgeable workers because they don't exist. There's not enough of them. So all these guys learn how to do something, but they don't know why they're doing it. Hmm. Well, if you come across a situation where something needs done, you may, you may do it wrong. You may do a certain thing correctly, but it's not why it needs done. So you're actually doing the wrong thing. Uh, I, I wish I had a better analogy for it, but um, you need to, to know why things are done the way they are. 
you know, why is there a jack, st- jack stud underneath mm-hmm. it? You know, um, why is it there? It, 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 you don't just put it there be- to, to put it there. It's transferring that load down. Where is it transferring the floor? Well, where's it going under the floor and why? You know, it's got to go down to a footing, that sort of thing. That's um, good. So people are framing up walls. They're just putting in headers and jack studs, and they don't need to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, that that sort of thing. Um, yep. On the why. The how is all over the Internet. Uh, YouTube's got all kinds of great channels. There's not a lot of why um, on YouTube. There's a few guys that tell the, the whys, and they're great. Um, I think Essential Craftsman is one. The Essential Craftsman, man, that guy – is amazing that's like listening to like your grandfather like that's just a wealth of knowledge i want to i just want a nice warm fire when, when he's when he's i talking. know it's like i just want to hang out with that guy you know he's, he's can he cool. adopt me <laughs> yeah, yeah. no he's a great educator i i wish i could do a youtube video like him or, he's or amazing uh, joseph millis i gotta get that mm. dude and some pearl snaps that joseph millis man killing yeah. it <laughs> I still think his voice is fake. I think he's faking it, but <laughs> Love that guy. we interviewed him. He's not, <laughs> unless he's got some crazy unless technology really going good. on there. Yeah, that guy's awesome. I watched that. That was good. I wish I wish I had started buying rentals earlier in life. So, anyway, yep. Learn the why behind the how. That's that's my best advice, and learn it all. Just fuck it up. Don't watch t- TV. Get into books. Um, it, if you're going to learn this, if you're going to do this for a living, uh, all your spare time that's not spent with your family, you need to be in, in a book or uh, watching instructional videos, the right instructional videos, you know, learning electrical code, you know, pick up a code book, learn all that stuff. Hmm. Um, all the codes are online now, all the building codes and, and local building codes. Just go through that stuff uh, like it's your Bible, you know, and, and learn learn that stuff because it, it's your job now. and you know, you can play video games later or, or to, you know, to blow off steam if you want, but, you know, turn TV off, get, get into the, the learning. <laughs> yep, definitely. Yeah. I think uh, one book that was recommended to me when I first started out was the Home Depot 123 book. And that was kind of a cool book of learning how to do things and also a little bit of why, but it was, it was mainly reading, but it was, it was really informative because it walks you through all kinds of stuff, you know. Those- Books. Nobody wants to be seen carrying out out of the store, especially if you if you park in the pro section. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Have somebody buy it for you. Meet you on the front. Uh, but it, it, you know, it's just it's knowledge. Um, yep. And it, it makes everything go faster. You're problem solving. You know the, that stuff's exponential. It's 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 a logarithmic scale. The more you learn about something else, it just goes up faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, all that stuff combines, you know, learn about the three-way wiring and four-way wiring and, you know, how the, the path, of signal flow, all that stuff. Um, just whatever. I just, yeah. Fantastic. More. I, I'm just saying, stop. If you're doing it for business now, get serious about it. it you, mm-hmm. If you're on a handyman group, you're, you're serious about learning the business of it. If you're listening to this podcast, you're serious about learning the business of it. Uh, get serious about learning, learning the hows and the whys. Hmm. Good at yeah, that. it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, but it's worthwhile. Yeah, that's you get confidence in pricing jobs and all that when you know what needs done, how, why. You know the traps that you're going to find, and 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 all the uh, stumbling blocks ahead of time. That the confidence that gives you the confidence. Hmm. Man, so good, Mike. Thank you so much uh, for all of your knowledge and your wisdom, man. Fantastic. You are definitely worthy of being on the Handyman Success Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, <laughs> that's a wrap on today's video here, guys. Um, thank you guys so much for listening and tuning in. A few things that we want to let you know about is we do have a Handyman Success Mastermind group on Facebook, um, and we're going to get Mike into that Facebook group. Uh, he's going to be there to answer any of your questions. You guys want to you know, talk to him about moderation, maybe, you know, <laughs> He's your guy. <laughs> um, join us there, Handyman Success Mastermind Group, and that's so that's one group on Facebook. We also have another group that's the Handyman uh, Journey Mastermind Group, and uh, that's another fantastic one just to learn everything, get started in your handyman business. 
Um, I'm one of your co-hosts, Alan Lee, owner of the Handyman Journey Business Consulting, and then my good friend, Jason Call, owner of Handyman Marketing Pros. We are here for you. We are here to help you out. Um, we are here to see you uh, create the life that you want to create. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and Mike, thank you again so much for being yep. here. And we'll catch all y'all on the next episode of the podcast. Have a great, have a great day, guys.